It's like, get hypey. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, and welcome to this week's episode of I Got Next, Games Radar's weekly talk show, wherein we bring people from outside of the world of game development on to hang out with us, and they do interesting things. My name is Anthony John Agnello, Senior Social Editor here at Games Radar, and today I am, I am joined by my good friend, Matt Hawkins. Uh, this is Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. How you doing? <laughs> I am good, man. Good, good, uh, good, good, good. Thank you for coming. Oh, it is a pleasure to be... To be here. ...in Casa Cabana, well, this Agnello, is, this, is a whatever. this is a different experience. Usually, if you're here playing video games, we're playing some insane Japanese import wherein you have to raise cats and feed them to dancing dogs. All right, I don't know how much you have uh, gone into this with your <laughs> fine viewers at home. Hmm. Or on your smartphones, or at work, because it is what you know, three thirty in the afternoon. Right. Anthony is a fellow member of a little of a little circle that was originally called the Import a, PlayStation a Ramen <laughs> and Hard Japanese Society. Liquor Society, which we've now shrunk it down to just right. Import Club. Now it's just Import. Import Club. Club. We, we, we are Import Club. Though we do have uh, spirits and ramen intermingled they do? every once in a while, but still, ultimately, we get together, we talk about the weirdness, the beauty that uh, is a lot of the games that come from yes. the land of the rising sun. Uh, and, and like, in the long, long ago, as yes. it were, the, the, yeah. ga the games from yesteryear. Uh, so, Matt is here with us today because while Matt did, did one at one time work in game development, there was there was a time where you made games. Yeah, I mean, it, I, 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 it can be argued that I am currently you're involved. Curr you're currently involved with games. That's true. But but once upon a time, once upon a time, Matt worked for Ubisoft here here in New York City, and your one big credit at Ubisoft uh. is <laughs> <laughs> that look on your uh. was was the crouching tiger. Hidden Dragon adaptation. Yes, yes. Uh, um, which was not your fave. My swan song. You know, it, like it's one of those things, and it's funny how um, it, uh, maybe it connects to what we're here for, where we're gonna be playing later today. Um, on paper, it sounded great, right? Right. You of know, course. I was I was reaching after this is like the nine or ten month mark of working on. At the point, it was like an experimental studio, and they were making games based upon. Um, uh, te primarily television properties that were finally like getting introduced to the European right. market. Um, the the big my big Moby Dick on that end was the Charles and Charge role playing game, which right. never got made, and it was going to be like a JRPG. It would have been ass. really good. That impresses <laughs> that impresses so many women on Tinder and OkCupid. You have no idea. That's the dating magic. Yeah, is I was working on a Charles and Charge video yeah. game. That and my encyclopedic knowledge of Mr. Show sketches. But oh, other than that, so anyway, so. Um, after working on crappy 18 games and Magnum PI games, like the 18 right. game, like, okay, we're going to make a 18 game, but we don't have the rights to any of the celebrity likenesses, so we're just going to have a, a black guy's fist coming out of a van, which doesn't even look like the AT van. It's, fairly, right. it's a fairly basic yet identifiable. <laughs> it's a white minivan. Yeah. So on paper, like the Crouching Tiger, like, it, like I don't know how much you know about this, that's actually part five of a seven-part story, mm -hmm. and we had the rights to the entire seven-part like literary right. series. But uh, they wanted uh, they wanted to make a game based on the movie, of course. Naturally, and it was going to be programmed by Genki, which has AM2 yeah, expats awesome. who are just working on Virtua Fighter 3 TV, which came out because Dreamcast just came out, and it's just you know it just didn't work. Yeah, because Istanbul, Ubisoft Istanbul didn't like my PowerPoint. I'm like, there's an Ubisoft Istanbul. Seriously, guys, give me a fucking break, people. I, you said I can curse on this oh, show, you right? Can curse yeah. On this show. All right. So, so, uh -huh. uh, so you moved on yes. from that into a storied career in games journalism. Yes. And yes. in Very. recent years, though, you've moved back into the world of development. You've helped out. On a couple of mobile and PC games. Oh yes. The most recent of which is uh, called Fate Tectonics. Yes. Which if you if you guys dig, like it's like you described it to me as like a mix of strategy and Tetris, right? It's it's like a co it's a combination of as this is the elevator pitch, right? It's a combination of Tetris and Sim City. There you go. If it was for the Super Nintendo. If it was for the Super Nintendo, yeah, yeah. which is. A hell of a pitch. So if you're into that era of weirdness, you can check that out. But I, 
I would go as far as to say that the vast majority of your time over the past four, three or four years has been focused on cultural curation. And and in the world of games... Oh, jeez, this game. So, <laughs> I mean, minute. first of all, like, are you looking at the ground like textures? Uh, okay. This, yeah, does this look even like a PlayStation 2 game? Uh... It, you know what? It looks like uh, like a D3 2000. Yeah. Simple 2000. Simple 2000. Yeah. So if, if anybody listening is unfamiliar with what we're talking about there, think Oni Chan Barra. Yes. Uh, but, like, honestly, I, I think Oni Chan Barra games look a little bit better than this. Well, first off, it's missing the rock soundtrack. Secondly, right. um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's very... It's very anime, right? I it's mean, super anime. You've got your anime face on the lower left-hand corner. You've got gears. <laughs> they love clocks in yeah, Japan. And, and like right now, it, it, this... It Everyone's works. like, oh, they love cat girls in Japan. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. It's the other things people don't notice. Like, they really like clocks. They're into clocks. They're into clocks, Clocks yeah. and blood types. Clocks, blood types, mass transit, of course. That makes right? sense. Um, let's see... So I you, do like how the radar is like a gear that rotates. I mean, that's a nice little touch. So you are... Oh God. So you... Does this automatically remind you of anything that Yuji Naka has made in the past? This has... Does it you of anything? This has a vague, vague, vague echoes of nights. Vague echoes vague, of nights. Or, to be honest, and this isn't a compliment, reminds me of the night sequel for the Wii, which he was not involved there, in. There you go. There you go. Oh my god. We, this show's an hour and a half. We could fill it by talking about Yuji Naka All right, the we'll, entire we'll, time. We'll, yeah. get, we'll get to Yuji Naka. I want to talk about you some more. So, so explain to people what you do for attract mode. Yes. What you've done in the past to work on pop-up arcades, I know that you're no longer affiliated with Baby Castles, but you were at one time yes, part of that. You're very active at uh, you know events like IndieCade and, and PAX. You're a very active guy in the gaming world. So uh, explain, explain for everyone what it is that, that you do. All right, long story short, right. um, I grew up liking three things. Quiet. Comic Let's books, movies, and video games. There you go. Of the three things, one of them, when you're like a 10-year-old kid in, growing up in the 90s without the internet, you can't even fathom how to make a video game. Now, my parents were poor. I, I'm using air quotes here. They were cheap. They didn't want to buy me a computer. So I figured to make video games, you kind of have to have a computer. I like that's the, the that's your baseline. That's the baseline, yeah. So you know, I instead uh, you know gravitate towards making films and comic books. Or like you could, there were Disney Channel had specials on how to fuck a movie got made, or mm -hmm. and I can buy books on how to make comic books and stuff like that. So I went to New York and I went to School of Visual Arts and I ended up doing making comic books and making movies. And then I just happened to, after I graduated, I happened to get hired in that dream job. Like, you know, no fucking around. Ubisoft, like, that was a, that was a, that was a life changer right there. Right, yeah, like, they a took a gamble game. on a complete idiot that had no formal training. To be fair, there was very little formal training in video games. That's how I got that job. Right. It's like, literally, here's your job interview. Uh, yellow pad, pencil, combined Tetris and Daytona USA. Sell it to me, boy. And I'm like, yeah, they liked it. So anyways. Um, a different era. A different era, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, this is like a New York game a game development. This mm -hmm. is before the iPhone. Right. So it was a wild, wild fucking west. So anyways, after that, I was doing, I made cell phone games. And again, this is before iPhone, so no one fucking played these games. Right. I made a dating game. I made a dating sim in 2002. That's right. Which uh, I'm currently writing about, which I'll get into in a second, later this afternoon. But anyways... So I found myself writing about video games uh, because my best friend, Dave Roman, mm -hmm. um, uh, yaytime.com. I have plenty of plugs. Yaytime.com. <laughs> that's the first one. So he was working at Nickelodeon Magazine, and he was the comic book editor, and he was constantly calling me like, Hey, Matt, uh, we have these freelancers, right? And they're, they, you know, they, they know enough about video games, but do you know what a sound a Pikmin makes? I'm like, oh, of course. <laughs> Uh, do you know what year, you know, Mario 2 USA, what does that even mean? Of course! And after a while, um, I got a job writing for the magazine, and that kind, of, that kind of led to my uh, game journalist career. But along the way, you know, I found out that what I liked to write about was not necessarily what was, you know, 
pitchable mm. to the editors at the time. Um, so I decided to write my own stuff and uh, tap into my comic book roots and make a zine. A zine, which is like the ultimate expression of cultural yes. curation. Which, and you know what, not to, I, people point this out, I was doing video game zines when it wasn't like popular. Now, not no, to sound uh, like an asshole. And like, mm. like, you know, you were also, you came up in a pop cultural era when zines for comics and music were very popular. Yes. And in yeah. and film. Like, and yeah. like and it, was, it was a thing that if you were part of fandom, and like, I always find it really interesting, like you talk to people in like the punk and indie rock scenes. Who, and, who are like the innovators of the zine scene? The innovator of the yeah. zine thing, and, and a part of the ethos for punk rock was always you need to help. You yeah, need, you if you, it's grassroots, very if, grassroots. If you are into this, you need to make something and contribute. Yeah. If you're not a musician and you're not somebody that has control of a space or you're not a record label, then you've got to do something. Yeah. So you make a zine. Yeah, if you're not out papering, if you're not, <laughs> not out papering, papering, you gotta you gotta help out. Right. If you're not with Henry Rollins. Getting in fights with no. skinheads and papering, then you're not doing your part. fucking yelling at the door guy, the fucking Continental. <laughs> and like the video, the video game equivalent of that is like in 2004, there was nobody sitting around saying like, "Oh, well, here's a zine that looks at the work of Yuji Naka." Well, there was one zine. Oh, there was the One Up zine done by Raina Lee, who created essentially. Um, uh, Reina, just just one up zine. Reina, just look her on Twitter. Yeah, you know, she's she does a lot of stuff these days. But she basically created the Citizen Kane of a video game zine, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And it's timeless. It's just as good as now as was when she published it back in 2002. But that was the template I was following. Yeah. So uh, I started publishing my own zines, and I sold them on my website, Fortnite.com. <laughs> <laughs> Not that updated as of late, like because who fucking updates their blogs these days? Yeah, nobody, except for the track mode blog. But I'll get to that in a second. Wait a minute, hold on. We got story now. A yeah. thousand years ago, the terrestrial civilization. How do you them. like this? Like this budget? Jesus Christ! And like, I find it so strange. So if you guys haven't caught into this yet, it's good. It's a good font, at least. We're we're playing Rodea the Sky Soldier. Yes. We're playing Yo Rodea the Sky Soldier, a a new. Wii U game that is coming out later this month, uh, published in the United States by NIS America, and this game is made. This is designed by, not even produced, designed by because he's more. His history is primarily as a producer. Well, but before that, before, yeah, he was a programmer. Programmer, yeah. programmer is Yuji Naka, the co-creator. Of Sonic the Hedgehog, and I would say like the face of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, right? I mean there was like well, there was like three dads. There involved. were th there were three dads involved, but Yuji Naka is the guy. Well, okay, now the thing is, it's like you know he was he once upon a time he was the Sega's answer to Miyamoto. Yes, he, he was, was Sega's Miyamoto. Yeah, and before that, the thing is, is like where Miyamoto's background, where he was a design. I mean, he made he designed toys. He was a, he, he was, was an artist. Illustrator. Yeah. Naka was a fucking programmer. Yeah. Like, he made, he fucking programmed Fantasy Star 2 for the Genesis. He and, did. Oh, my he God. Did, he did the amazing, amazing Sega Genesis port of Ghouls and Ghosts. Mm. That was his baby, yeah. that programming. And that's an, incre that's yeah. an incredible feat of programming. Yeah. And really, really, really cool guy. Uh, and so I would say, you know, there was his background as a, a programmer, and he really broke through with Sonic the Hedgehog. And it's really interesting, like Sonic the Hedgehog 2, I read an interview with the M2 guys of the new 3D release of Sonic They're, 2. They are, they are gods amongst men. And they, they talked about how even now, they are just astounded by the programming. They just look at that Yonaka code and I'm like, holy in shit. Sonic 2. Yeah. They, well, they were talking about the versus mode and they were like, what the yeah. hell? How did he even yeah. do this? And so years pass, uh, he really was like kind of responsible for a lot of Sega's best work on the Dreamcast. Like, Choo Choo Rocket is this man's baby. He designed Choo Choo Rocket, one of the best goddamn games that there is. He produced uh, he produced Fantasy Star Online. Yeah. Before that, on the Saturn, he was responsible for Nights into Dreams and, and uh, Burning Rangers. Very industrious career. Like, I, you know, uh, Nights is still... Like an amazing game. Oh, it's still like, amazing. A technical game. tour de force. Right. Um, s extremely ahead of its time. Oh yeah. Like he was pretty forward thinking. Even Burning Rangers, you know, oh. um, 
Burning Rangers is an incredibly forward-thinking game. Uh, like, you just uh, interactions with voice... I mean, granted, the execution is a bit... There's a, Here's the deal. He's a he's like a genius that is just like he just didn't have the best tools to work with. He right. did the best that he could. Right. But it's everything from the pressure of being Miyamoto, like in a public face, where like because I remember in reading in Next Generation magazine, like mm -hmm. they were everyone was putting him on this pedestal. Of course. And you know, I and that was never really where he wanted to be. No, that was no. never where he wanted. Yeah. To be. So in the past decade, Yuji Naka left Sega. He left around 2007, 2006. Um, I was under the impression like 2005-ish, but... Well, you know, I, I mean, because he, he still worked... Yeah, no, that's that that plays out, because he worked on Sonic Heroes and did. did not work on Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. There's mm. your dividing line. And he decided to to sort of break out onto his own, opened his own studio called ProPay. Mm. Uh, Is that how you pronounce it? It's, it's, it's Propay. I found that out because I, I actually, I have a history on this show of mispronouncing pretty much every name. Well, you know, prop, it's, proper noun. it's not our native tongue, so that's, yeah. that's, you know, that should be. And so at Propay, though, he's he's taken on far more of a designer role. Okay. And so he's, you know, credited as like the designer or the director on... Ivy the Kiwi, which was a very early iPhone yeah, yeah, game yeah. that turned into an amazing Wii game. Yeah. And uh, Let's Tap, which is the, so it's the best. underrated. It's the best. It's really good. It's the uh, music. The, the, the I, I have it on my like workout. Right. Uh, you know, so playlist. good. Yeah. And uh, and a, a, a charming little game called Fishing Resort, which I've never I've never played personally. Oh, for the for Wii. That's a Wii game. Oh. It's like a. It's sort of like anim if Animal Crossing was only about fishing. Which which um which of the Street Pass games did they make? Oh, um, the Haunted Mansion one. Yes, that's yeah. what it is. Uh, and that's that's another one that I, I think most people don't realize was Propay. Uh, I mean. Well, I think when you boot it up, like it always gives the the the, the yeah the little yeah, little but most thing. people don't pay attention to that. It is like my, I mean, I think right. it's a lot of people right. the one everyone's most invested in of all the Street Pass games. Right. Uh, yeah, it's the one that people continue to play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then there's this. There, this is Rodea the Sky Soldier, and this game has a really tortured history because this was announced, I think, in 2010 or 2011. And the idea was like, oh, Yuji Naka wants to get back to the anime-style cartoon action-adventure game that sort of made him famous. Yeah. And they started developing it for the Wii in 2011, which is... What are you doing? Well, you know... De the deadest of dead systems by that point. It was like, it was plummeting so fast... And it could be argued there's so many... I mean, this is a whole other conversation. There's just so many bad business decisions in the Japanese game industry. Right. And 2010, 2011 was, like, the first real big visible cracks. Yes. You know, Kenjin yes. Ifune oh, yeah. saying, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm, I'm going to go make con Concept. Yeah. Concept, which I think is a very underrated developer right now. They've done some very good work. I, they've had a very weird, very catalog, from what I can tell. Uh... Yeah. Oh God. God. The control is so bad. All let's, right. Wait, wait. Let's. Okay. Let's. All right. So how so, how's this game play? One. I'm one, glad you're playing, not me, because I am such a bad. Oh, you're getting this controller as soon as I'm uh, done with this stage. Right, right. Because so so not only does Matt have a fascinating career, and that that, that made me want you on this show anyway. Yes. This like Yuji Naka is one of the guys that made you fall in love with video oh, games in the like, first place. Yes. You yes. are you are Sega guy number one. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's, that's quite the compliment. Right? Yeah. Well, I you know, like you're the guy who when they announce a special version of the Megatron action figure that turns into a Sega Genesis, you're the guy who's like, I got to have that. Who already has it. I got I got to yes. have it right now. Yeah. So what is it? What is it about Naka's games that really gets your go? Well, okay. So when you're talking about Naka, you're talking about a programmer, and you're talking about the basic fundamental building blocks of a fucking video game, right? Right. And it's it embodies the the whole underdog spirit of like, you know, the, the reason why that for me my favorite my favorite era of games was the 16-bit era. Right. Because, okay, I grew up in Washington State, which is Nintendo country, like literally Nintendo's headquarters there. And it was a weird time where like Nintendo was kind of like a golden boy. They like, ooh, this kooky Japanese company is like, is a local success story. And um, 
And the NES, the NES was still keeping them flush oh with yeah. cash. That yeah. and the Game Boy. Yeah, and you know, like my uh, when I first uh, when it came to buy a Nintendo. I didn't buy a Nintendo, I bought an Atari 7800. Oh, wow, yeah. all right. Because I was a shmup guy. That's an, that's an odd choice. Yeah, very odd choice. <laughs> and, you know, also my dad recognized more of the Atari games than myself. Th uh, than, than, you know, he recognized pole position more than, like, most Nintendo games. So I'm like, oh, I can maybe get that and play with my dad and stuff like that, which, you know, did to a certain extent. Uh, that makes yeah. sense. But then eventually, you know, I did get a Nintendo, and I enjoyed a Nintendo, because everyone had a Nintendo. But then I remember being at the at the post exchange, it was like, I'm a military brat, so it was like a general store, and they had, like, Sonic the Hedgehog running, and, like, literally he's running. And I'm like, wow, he's really fast. Like, that's really cool. He looks like, kind of like a Disney character, and you'd find out years later down the road, I'm like, they were looking at Mickey Mouse in terms of character yeah. designs. So, back, I, back in the day is when you could walk into an establishment, see a demo of a game running, and know what the game Yeah, was. exactly, like, yeah. What, what you would do with Yeah. It. So I got a Genesis, which was a controversial decision on the playground. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, like, what's the... what, Dude, you're not getting into the Super Nintendo? Like, no, I'm going to get this fucking Genesis. Um, and I loved my Genesis. I eventually got a Super Nintendo. Because it was this weird thing where, like, you kids from growing up now, it's like... Nintendo was the the name of video games yes. in the nineties, but in the early nineties was this anti-Japanese sentimentality that was that was springing up. Uh -huh. And I remember in my neighborhood, especially uh, for a military brat. For, for a military brat, yeah. Um, so I remember the big the big deal was like yeah, locally, Nintendo wanted to buy wanted to buy a portion of the Mariners, which is the Seattle baseball team. Oh, that's right. And everyone was like, whoa, 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 whoa. The fucking Japanese companies own a fucking piece of American baseball out <laughs> buying all that shit. So you had that, and you had these fucking protests where people were like destroying Japanese cars at car lots, even though they were all assembled in America, and the American so cars, strange to the American, think about yeah, this. Like, and the American cars were actually assembled in Mexico. And then you had the Roseanne episode. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I had forgotten yeah. about that. Because Roseanne was the like the the mirror of the American family. Yeah, and you know. The Arnolds, they wanted... They want they, a Super Nintendo. They want a Super Nintendo, and they finally get one, and guess what? They and fell in love with... It. Yeah, they fell in love with the Genesis, because their, their neighbors had a Genesis. It was like this whole... Anyways, long story short, eventually I got a Super Nintendo, yeah. but I found myself being, like, kind of a United Nations representative. As soon as any time anyone ragged on the Genesis, like, hold on a second. Right. You know, we've got Sonic, we've got Gunstar Heroes, we've got Virtual Racing Amazing Port. Meanwhile, other side of the coin, we had a lot of Genesis devotees ragging on Super Nintendo. Hey, let's not get crazy here. You know, Yoshi's Island's amazing, Zelda, right. you know, uh, right. Star Fox, etc. like that. But I always... That's unheard of in the yeah. playground debate. That's, that's... And even now, I find it hilarious that in an age where, where you have a lot of people who are able to own multiple consoles... Like, I love, like, like five years ago, it was very common to hear people be like, I have a 360 and a Wii. I have a PlayStation 3 and a Wii. Yeah. Like, like there's, like, people own multiple gaming machines now in a way that they didn't during the No, that was very, about. yeah. And yet, people are even more psychotic when they're yelling about, well, like, what console beats what console. And, 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 and like, who cares? Who cares? And it's funny. Does anybody give a shit? I, it's well, no. It, it, like it doesn't. It doesn't exist anymore. Last I checked, remember Lens of Truth. Lens of Truth. Lens of Truth used to do really hardcore side by side comparisons of, let's say, Vanquish for the 360. Oh PS3. no, I, I'm totally unfamiliar. With this. They would play like meticulously, exactly the same way in both systems. Have both footage side by side, and they'd go over the minutia like, oh, the, the V syncing is worse, the the frame rate's worse on that one. There's some polygonal tearing. Whereas back in the day, it's pretty fucking apparent which version is of Street Fighter 2. That's either for the Genesis right. or the Super Nintendo. And because everyone ragged on the Genesis, yeah. I felt the need. You know what? I'm gonna support the Genesis version. And the thing is. They really had to, to make that fucking machine hum, they really had to go had to get pull out all the stops. You had to get tricky. So when, I, like, as a kid, I'm like, I'm looking at the split screen of Sonic 2. Am I seeing two games running at once? And then basically that's how that's it was. Why, well, it was. That's what it was. Just shit like that. In Sonic 3, when it would exit out of a out of a bonus stage, how come certain colors are lingering? Because I didn't realize they combined colors to, to overcome the 60. So it was like, it was kind of like a... 
this is, sounds stupid, like a hacker machine. Like, you know, you, oh, really, no, you yeah. really had to fucking do a lot and, out of and that. Like, and, and even, like, the, the, the sound chip that was in it, it was a Panasonic-made mm. sound chip, and the color palette that was on there, it sort of, it, it, it gave it that gritty feel. It was grungier, like, yeah. It was, it was a grungier yeah. system. And, like, you and I disagree on this. Like, I, I am a Super Nintendo sound chip guy. Oh. I, 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 and you always say, like, all oh. that farty organ sound. It I sounds like the fart. parents from Peanuts. I love it. I love <laughs> it. <laughs> I, like, it's a subjective thing. I know, I know. But, like, I, I, I totally understand, like, how something like that, that very, like, acidic sound yeah. of the Sega Genesis sound chip is just like addictive like it, it's it, it's hard not to fall in love with I mean that. like my, my I figured and this is the crazy thing about a lot of Sega games in general like a lot of their games are a natural evolution like yes. I, I my, mentally orally I feel there's a there's a logical progression between the Commodore 64 sound SID chip and the Genesis sound chip. Oh, completely. Whereas Nintendo has these weird deviations, yeah. and historically they've always made deviations. That's really why they are so good. Yeah. And at the end of the day, yeah, I hate the Nintendo sound chip, but those fuckers can make anything sound incredible. I also like, I, like you know, it's funny. Like the Nintendo identity, everybody's always sitting there saying it's it's why like it's so sad that the the Yuji Naka era of Sega is gone because Sega was all about like idea experimentation well, yeah. and whereas I love I love Nintendo's philosophy of you know we're gonna do the same idea but we're gonna approach it from a completely different angle with a completely different sound yeah, yeah, feel yeah. everything I, I do I do miss that that Sega of old and it was why I was so excited about Rodea the Sky Soldier coming out because I was like oh maybe Maybe this is like Yuji Naka is going to be making something that really taps back into that, and that is not this game. Well, I mean, that's the a, that's a story of Sega, right? Like, they, they did the best that they could with limited resources, and they, like, remember when they split all the studios off during the Dreamcast era? Everyone had an identity. Like, right. this is insane! This is like communism, which doesn't work on paper! <laughs> it's like, oh my god. And, like, we got... We got Rez, which I think is one of the, the again. We got Rez. Yeah, like, we got we got Choo Choo Rocket. We got we got Seaman. Mm. We got like all. We got um, Cosmic Smash. Yeah, it, it was an interesting time. I remember uh, that very first issue of Dreamcast Magazine here in the states, which Future. Uh, our publisher here at Games Radar was was responsible. I for still it. have issues of that. <laughs> Loved that magazine, but the very first issue had like a yearbook style gallery mm. for all of the different that. studios. Yeah, I remember that. Like this is who makes what at Sega. See, it, if this looks like it's like really cool right now, like oh you're flying around and then you're rushing through coins like Sonic, I want to assure everybody. That it is. It took me hours to get to this level. Yeah, it looks like you know of, what you're doing. Like fluidity with the controls and like uh, not wrestling with it anymore. Right. And the other thing is, is it all breaks down. It all breaks down by the time you get to like the fifth level, and there are like 25 levels. Because look down here in the corner. Those are freaking extra lives. I have three lives, okay. and if you lose all your lives. You have to do an entire hour-long level again from the start. There's so you'll get to a boss that you can't even, like, see how it's hurting you because the camera sucks so bad. <laughs> That's that noise. That noise is the noise somebody playing a Sega game made after a certain point has always made. And unfortunately... You're fucking, you're fucking playing Fantasy Star 2. Right, yes. <laughs> it's like... Oh my god, I don't have an escapite. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna play this over again. Let me crack open this book, which came with my 80 goddamn dollar. Right. My dad's like, you're spending $80 on a game? You're, don't worry about you're it. You're 12, you know that, right? Like, yeah, I know. Don't worry yeah. about it. All right, you know what? We're gonna get through this level, and then I'm gonna hand this controller over to you, and we can go back to the prologue so you can try to figure out how the hell to do this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us here at the top of the hour, welcome. My name is Anthony John Agnello, Senior Social Editor at GamesRadar.com, and this is I Got Next, our weekly talk show 
We're gonna we hang out with somebody who is adjacent or slightly outside of the games industry and we play video games with them. Today's guest is somebody who is still involved with the games industry, but is here in his capacity as a cultural curator. See there, I just died for oh, no dude. reason. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Matt Hawkins. Matt Hawkins is a, has a storied career in and outside of gaming. These days, you can find him at Attract Mode. Yes. And uh, is there a name for your like your private representation business? Is there so like the people, the folks you work for for Fate Tectonics? Do you are you an independent contractor or an employee? I'm uh, an employee. Of, an employee. Uh, so yeah. So oh, I didn't even finish my whole Attract right. Mode spiel, but uh, right now, um, you know, I'll just I'll just jump around. So right now, my primary gig is I work for. Bento Miso, which is a, uh, a video game co-working space in Toronto, there you go. Uh, which is like the, um, I think it's kind of been, you know, it's it's commonly uh, accepted that it is uh, the epicenter of the red hot indie game making uh, oh, yeah. movement that started with uh, N Plus and Everyday Shooter, uh, every, yeah, Everyday Shooter. Uh, it's back. so weird to think about that being a long time ago. Well, yeah, no. Uh, you know, so, like, in Canada, like, their fucking government, like, supports the arts. So that kind of helps, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I work for Bento Miso, which originally started as a coking space for web people. But then they found out, like, wow, there's a lot of game people in this community. So um, they started to sort of uh, cater towards the, the needs of that community. And uh, it's led to things like uh, DMG, uh, Dames Making Games, one of the, the, I think, the most prolific and accomplished um uh, entities that helps uh, uh, get women, gay, trans, uh, by just, you know, people whose voices aren't represented in video games, uh, you know, a lot's been, there's a lot of progress been made, but there's a lot more progress that needs to, to be made. Yeah. Yes, absolutely and true. So recently, they um, actually started to, because there's a lot of games being made in their, in their, um, in their uh, hollowed halls, like, uh, uh, asteroid base, you know, um, every day, uh, lo lovers in a dangerous space time. Oh yeah, that which was is very. We just had that on the show. Yeah, that was made there, and uh, a lot of Christine loves games. You know, analog. Uh, I don't know. I'm blanking it. I'm blanking here. I'm sorry. I don't know how we got out of here, man. Oh, yeah, I, I gotta <laughs> tell you. Although, anyways, yeah. So, um, because there's a lot of games being made there. Um, the the fine folks who run Bento Me, so Henry Henry and Jenny Faber. Hi guys. Uh, they they're uh, actually investing in some of the games and publishing it. There's a new uh, publishing room called Toy Temp. Oh, okay. Oh God, you're gonna love this. <laughs> you're gonna fucking love this. You gotta look at the logo, and everyone goes, "What's the logo about?" And there's this whole like backstory, like, what if in an alternate reality, uh, I'm getting I'm getting this all wrong. What if Microsoft time teamed up with uh, KB Toys to launch the Xbox? <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. The first game they're publishing is uh, Fate Tectonics by Golden Gear Games, um, which is the aforementioned uh, hybrid of Tetris and um, SimCity. Sim uh, it's, it's a lot like Populous. Uh, and that's uh, the first game coming out, first of many, and it's available by Steam right now. So I'm helping them out. I'm doing some PR stuff because, like, hey, what does what a lot of people who got out of video game writing do? They do PR stuff. They do PR Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. And I think I mentioned I was writing about games, but I also made zines. That's how I met up with Adam Robozelli. He's the guy who started Attract Mode. So what happened there is, you know, I was getting to that. was like, you know, I was selling my zines online, and this guy from California says, Hey, man, I like your zine. Can I buy it? I'm like, yeah, sure. I give him a zine. Then he says, hey, I like your zine. That's great. Can I buy 10? I'm like, sure. Uh, okay. Yes. Because he was building a store. He was building a store oh, wow. that was selling like video game culture related things. See, now that's really cool. Yeah. So, um, and uh, I gave him some copies and they sold well on the site. And we, we met. And we got along really well. And I was brought into the fold of a track notes. So originally it was just him and I. Mm -hmm. And... We were selling stuff at like um, PAX. Uh, we made friends with certain people, like the fine folks at Fan Gamer, and we kind of, and we still are friends. They, uh, we kind of became their indie buddies. Like, fan, fan Gamer, who the kids like their fan. Games. Yes. Well, you know, they uh, they help to uh, advocate Earthbound. I think that's their biggest claim yeah, of fame. Er, yeah, yeah, that that is accurate. They they ta they found a way to commercialize the the cult yes of 
Are we are we comfortable calling Earthbound people a cult? I do it all the time. <laughs> God, it's a fucking cult, people. It is. It is it's there's very, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing with wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it at all. But guys, hey, if you can pay the bills with what you like doing and what you fucking love, that's, that's all that matters. Right. Yeah, all that matters. So a lot of shit happened all at once around the time where we hooked up with Fan Gamer. Um, I, I met up with these people in Brooklyn that were like doing DIY video game things in a basement right and uh, like hey you should meet this Matt Hawkins guy hi I'm Matt Hawkins and I I was there for the early ages the early days of Baby Castles which is like a video game a pop up arcade yeah, is I don't that, know. What, is that fair? Is I, that I, accurate? I, these I don't days? know what they're calling themselves these days, but um, basically, um, that with them, through them, with them, we did our. I did my first uh, video game exhibitions because my partner Adam had a relationship with Giant Robot. He was doing stuff for folks in San Francisco, so he had SF, I had NY, and we did some shows and uh, in in uh, Queens and in Manhattan. And uh, after that, got invited to go up to Toronto. For, uh, to do something for the for Toronto Comics Arts Festival, and that's how I met the Fabers, and we got along very well. And then I started doing shows with them, and then with Fan Gamer, started doing shows in Seattle during PAX. So and then getting more and more involved in the in the indie game paradise yeah. that is Toronto. So the thing is, you know, the thing is, uh, uh, we all like video games, right? But everyone talks to video game people. And <laughs> sorry, it's the third level of the game. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> you know, good font. <laughs> it's like yeah, good fonts. Good, it's good fonts. font. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I and I think you know this as well. I've, uh, you know, I'll, I'll hire a lot of artists to work on video game stuff, but these aren't like necessarily video game people. These are mm. cartoonists, yeah. illustrators, and we all are video game people. That's why the term. Gamers. I mean, this is a weird thing to go. It's such a weird thing. It's like we all like video games. Am I a movier? Am I a musicer? Am I a comicer? Yeah, it's really weird that like like, like there's I, you know I feel like at one time there was for for science fiction there was right. trekkie as a blanket term. Yeah. I don't think that's really representative of anything no, anymore. Yeah. But like I, I video games seems to be the only medium I can think of where home? there is like a self-identifying noun that people have glommed onto and sort of hold sacred in some way. I don't I don't like referring to myself as a game person. Yeah. I think it's I think it's ridiculous. I like video games uh, enough to you know, pursue discussion of yes, them yes. as a profession, but uh, I, I would never call myself a gamer. Well, yeah, obviously because of that label, there's certain connotations which are yeah, positive Rob, and negative. Robbie, Robbie Deguay here in, oh. the, uh, <laughs> in the chat says, I should call myself a musicer. Yes. 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 <laughs> He's actually a good musicer, by the way. He did the soundtrack for uh, Fate Tectonics. Oh, nice. I like that music. And, it's good music. And every year he does an album of uh, Christmas covers where every song is done via different various styles of you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Gen. It's really nice. fun. It's awesome. Yeah, it's really fucking good. It's really fucking good. Robbie Duguay, uh, just follow him on Twitter. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, it's just, uh, the whole the whole label thing is a bit, you know. It's, it's weird. It's weird. It's a weird It's thing. weird, yeah. So, but, um, I don't know I was going with this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I, I like to hire people who are not necessarily, they don't consider themselves, because we're all video game people. Right. We all fucking plead a Genesis or a Nintendo or some shit like that. Everyone pl fucking plays games with God on their goddamn iPhones. Right, like that's so, right. So I, I'll, I'll, you know, I also have a lot of cartoonist friends who now work in the world of animation, so fucking half the goddamn staff of Steven Universe dumb shit fucking track yep. at this point. Not, that's not a complaint, by the way. Um, no, I think I think that's a celebratory yes, no, yeah. triumph. Yeah. So, uh... No, no! All right, so your character has what, like, the tail looks interesting. It looks like... All right, you see, do you see the, the like, meter around the just target? Too... There's so many, look at how many things there are. All right, so the, the, the meter that is around your target is how long you can stay in there. Oh, my God. Is... And you have almost no control over what way you're really facing in the air. So this is where I think... For me, I mean, everyone has their theory, right? 
I feel where Japanese game design kind of like started to really stumble. Oh, started to go off the rails? Was during the HD era, because since there was so much clarity, let's fill it up with menus, and let's fill it up with targets and shit like that. There's just so much shit all over the fucking place. I can't... There's like... There's th there's four sets of different... No five sets of different numbers. I mean, there's just too much shit going on. I mean, okay, there's the character lives, there's the time, there's there's some... Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. This is too much shit going and on. Like, I don't understand I, what's happening. I, I'm very interested to play the original Wii version. Yeah, I mean, that's the reason why I'm getting the game. Yeah, just, I, want, just, I want that. I want, yeah. I want to play that because this does inherently feel like something where I should be going like this. Yes. Not, yeah. not controlling it with these, but even, even then, there's like, you're still dealing with the clutter. You're still dealing with the fact that I have two extra lives to get through a level that's going to take me about 45 minutes to get through. And, like, I gotta do all of this again? That's that's not, oh, uh, troubled, ga troubled uh, development for an awkward game design. I love that's the, just bad. I love the vague uh, uh, Valkyria Chronicles filter of the, the, <laughs> the colored play. All right, that's like, nice, I guess. I, and, but, like, like I'm, I'm really, wa I want to see if that's in any other version. What are these because guys? part of me wonders if that was used to just make the Wii U version look at least they had a that filter little bit around. more, yeah. like, palatable. Uh, here we go. No, no, he disappeared. God, it's pretty Like, I weird. really, I can't tell what you're doing. Like it's it's hard for me to know what the act what so because you know when you're when you okay you know bad comparison when you're watching someone play Mario I I can oh right I can see you running towards a character and you're jumping on them but these actions are so quick I just died and there was nothing on the screen to indicate what killed me mm. at all like I'm not saying it's Sonic 2006 bad but it's it's close uh all right. So you know what? I'm gonna return to the world map. All right. Okay. <laughs> Alaskan, right. Oh, no. Alaskan man 04. Hello, everybody. In the in the Doctor Nick voice. Hello. Hello to you. Welcome. Oh, Alaska man, are you are you near Soldatna? It's part of part of Australia. Uh, part Alaska. Why did I say Australia? <laughs> Same fucking thing. Whatever. All right. You. Mm. We're going back to the. Prologue. I'm sorry, Alaskonians. I'm sorry. <laughs> going all the way back to the prologue. This look at this. Look at this is a beautiful screen. This mural that is meaningless <laughs> to anything that's going you on. You know, okay, do you do you get yourself like irrationally angry at like interfaces? Oh, all the time. Cuz I have my so uh, my buddy Dave who I mentioned earlier. I remember one like we we loaded up what was that game Dragon's Crown, the Atlas the, oh, the Vanillaware thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dragon's Crown. And, like, I was just lo losing my shit over the shitty interface. Like, dude, calm down. <laughs> Why are you so angry? You're like, I just want to know what I'm doing, okay? I don't give a shit how pretty it is. Mm. Alright, oh, okay, we got the storyline. There you go, yeah. Alright. So we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, ra we're gonna circle back and look at the prologue. And the, the prologue is just inexplicable. Honestly. I'm so tired of everything having this vague... Hints of Miyazaki, like let's just get over it, okay, people. <laughs> let's fucking get over it. And it, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like Shadow yeah, of the Colossus. Like, like, it's kind of like fucking Lapita. It's kind of like oh. like oh, there's gonna be airships. Oh it's god. Gonna be air like you're not Hayao Miyazaki. Yeah. You're not <laughs> Fumito Ueda. Stop it. Uh... Stop it. Unless you suddenly get better. All right, here is. Did they get to you? This is, the, this is your you? awful tutorial. Mm, is there a Japanese There's language even... option in this? I don't know. It totally is. Yeah, yeah. There's okay, totally no, dual language option. Right. I always... You know what I do? See, I turned it back on for the stream, but if I have the option in a game, I go right into the menu, <laughs> I turn off all voices. I don't want to hear... You know what? I love it. This is an anime way. thing. Like, mm, the Japanese voice acting is so much better. I'm like, yeah. Is it? You you really know that, you huh? Really, you know you that. really know you that, know that huh? You know how people are supposed to wow, sound yeah. conversational. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, so this this is now going to uh, okay. It's going to teach you how to do things. I think if you press A, maybe that'll. Well, you know, it. they should say that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Look, to Matt, there are lots room. of things that they should say in Rodan First off, prologue over. mission. So is it one word or two? <laughs> Yay, I did it! Did I get an achievement? Okay, 
Oh, thank God there are no achievements. That's, that's another thing I always turn off. Turn it right off. Hey, you fuckers that were so... Who my 360 gamer score? What? Yeah, it's 2015. Does that matter now? Does it matter now? Does that carry over the Xbox? <laughs> I had a friend of mine. We, uh, we had Electrium says, I don't know about this weeb hostility. <laughs> I don't know, Electrium. I feel pretty good about it. <laughs> I feel pretty good about don't it. Don't worry, I'm bashing the Xbox One now. So <laughs> I remember I was having dinner with a friend of mine who bought an Xbox One. She doesn't give a shit about Halo, but she loves Dan Central and mm. she's the whole Harmonix ecosystem. And we're having dinner, like, hey, do you have an Xbox One? And I just laughed right, and right. I laughed and I laughed. Anyways. So, okay, this is this is going to teach you the central thing you're going to be doing. Okay, jump and enter pre Oh, God. I should jump and enter pre mode to make sure things are safe. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, have fun. Master ability. <laughs> <laughs> Was that correct? So that... And, like, this is the worst tutorial. Because all it does is confuse Do you people more. know what reticule is? Maybe they do at this point, right? I, I would hope. Like, I, I know because of... Right, because you've been playing games for yeah. freaking 25 years. During pre-flight... Alaskan Man 04, there's so much dialogue in some of these games, I just skip it so I'm not listening to it all day. Right there with you. Like, I got to a point in this, and I, I love my story in games. I always want story. But with this, I was like, nope, shut yeah, up. Yeah. Oh, I don't care. Okay, now, here's I'm the leaving. thing. I remember when I was in college and I had a Saturn... Um, and I would like have friends. I was the guy in the dorm who had the video game systems because yeah. eventually I got a PlayStation N sixty four. You know, it's funny. Like people would go like, "Can I play Goldeneye?" Like I could give two shits about that game, but you can fucking play it. It's a good game, whatever. It's just not for me. But anyways, it was a good game. It's it was a good terribly. game. Was that? It's yeah, aged terribly. It's perfect dark matter. Uh, I, you know, like playing these things in the original system is uh, like once you have dual analog, it's so hard to go back. True. To yeah, using yeah, a yeah. stick and then yeah. buttons to control your perspective. Yeah. It's just, but it's that, just, it's just not. But that yeah. rare soundtrack remixing uh, James Bond themes. Anyway, oh, so, Grant Kirko. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, that Grant Kirko. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I remember like showing a Saturn game, like Panzer Dragoon Saga, mm -hmm. and like that is a great story. Great story. And my friends like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, have I become them? And, right. And, no. Well, it's all about it's all about like balance. Because Panzer Dragoon, you've got, like, what? Like, uh, one of these little tutorial screens that, yeah. is as long as the cutscenes yeah. in Panzer Dragoon. Like, this is this is lengthy. This is long. Like, I already forgot what I did before that was correct. <laughs> I'm glad the L-Stick is moving. Well, right. That's Just very so helpful. Know. Just yeah, so you know. That's good. During pre-flight, aim the reticule at your destination and press jump. Princess Cecilia should be Oh, God, Duke. I wish they would make a new Panzer. You are not alone, my friend. I I would... Okay, was that... Well, they did make a new Panzer Dragoon. What? It was just a launch game for the Xbox One that was a modified Kinect game. Wait, what? Did what? I do that correctly? Huh? <laughs> so welcome to Rodea the Sky Soldier. Because, welcome, welcome uh, to figuring out how the how this thing plays. Oh my god, the gauge the runner is cool. Like, is the, oh, is, is the flight energy indicator right? Okay. Now, because there's three circles, it's the big one. It will be gradually consumed during a flight. Oh man, Yaddle, I'm still shocked I was able to make it through Jet Force Gemini back in the day. The fact that you finished that game is freaking amazing. That game's man. really way too fucking hard. It's so hard. Battle it's hard. so long. Yeah, Battle Toad long. The stages are like. I mean, like, it's technologically impressive that they were so big. Yes. But it was useless that they were so big. <laughs> Why? Mm. Man, I know that I know that they're adding in proper dual stick control to the Jet Force Gemini that's in the Rare Replays uh, collection. Oh, really? And I can't I no. can't wait for that. I am right. thrilled. Thrilled right. about that. All right. Okay. All right. So flight energy can be restored by landing or by obtaining graviton. Are these like the L's in Mega I Man don't, Zero? I just don't... <laughs> like I, I, just I don't need don't. characterizations of lights. Like, give me a break. As far as I can tell, this is the last time you ever hear about gravitons. I'm out of flight energy. I can use gravitons as fuels in a pinch. Okay. All right. <laughs> the number is my... I think it's, I think it's kind of... So jump in the air. Now tar target that star. 
And now just head towards that, and you'll just get pulled along those stars. But... Oh, now you're gonna die. But how... Oh, shit, Sherlock. See, if this were any other stage, you would just continue to fall until nothingness. Now, the game doesn't tell you this for a couple of levels, but if you want to just go straight up in the air... I love that! It doesn't tell you for six hours! Right, it doesn't tell you. Like, you will play for at least 45 minutes before you find out that if you press Y, you will go straight up. Oh my god. And now if you press down in Y, you'll go straight down. Alright, so first off, I can't even tell if I was at the edge of something, All right. so I'm at the edge. <laughs> You're at the edge. So you want to, yeah, A, and then target that, and if you want to go faster, press B. Because, <laughs> really, that was... So think about think about like what your perspective is when you're on the ground. You were like, I couldn't even tell that you were on the edge of something. And eventually, you'll be surrounded by enemies. I don't I don't need the anxiety of like I hope I have enough gas in the zip car to get me to the gas station. That's the exact. I same sure hope that I have enough. Like oh. But like even oh. then, if you were worried about the gas in your zip car. You would at least be comforted to know that you can see the road yeah, between like, you and the gas station. I don't like when games just make me pray. <laughs> <laughs> that is... Dear God, please dear let God, this work. Please, please let, let me this get, work. Please let me get to a checkpoint. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think like a central aspect of Yuji Naka's games, though, is the prayer factor. Like, I'm, I'm, I love classic Sonic the Hedgehog. But you've got to admit that there is a lot in those games that is based around you moving forward and taking leaps of faith. You've named, you just described Sonic and Knuckles. Was that in the back of the box? <laughs> just hit right and hope that and hope it, and hope, hope it you all land. Works out. Hope you land. Hope it all works out. Like I, okay. I think I think Sonic Two is an amazing game. Sonic Two okay. holds up really well All right. but like I, you know replaying the 3D version in the past few weeks uh, god the, the chemical plant zone the second world of the game is just constantly tricking you oh come on it's, no it's that fucking the, the one that has three zones when you go like oh this is such a slot there's a third zone there's a third zone oh great yeah. wow yeah I, like Yuji Naka Yuji Naka's games are very much about putting you in a position where you're like, well, I'm just gonna have to guess. I'm just gonna have to hope it all works out. Here, you gotta finish this prologue. Although, it could, okay, it could be said that a lot of games were like that back then, and because we had limited options, right. like, okay, I'm gonna play this game because, like, seriously, I, I spent $30 on this fucking cartridge, where now right. I'm bored of this. I'll just load up the 16 other games that's already in the system. I don't even have to change anything. And right. I've got five consoles right. and stuff like that, so... You know, it's a, it's a victim of the reality of the situation where, like, it's hard to rely on these old fucking tropes. So Single and Lovin' It says, this game is like Knights if it was made by a maniac. I don't know, Single and Lovin' It, because that implies, like, I, I don't like what that says about maniacs. Maniacs have an attention to detail. Right, they yeah. do. Like, the, the, the criminally insane yes. tend to be very focused. Yes. And this, this, this is made by somebody who's clearly incompetent. Or just, like... Or just lost. Just, just, just. I don't. I don't. I'm not working late tonight, guys. All right. This, this is All you, right. man. Okay. My armor energy. All right. Let's see. Don't let it run out, or I'll earn <laughs> Seriously, you had to put that in, ca in quotation. Quotation marks. If they run out, I like. Game over. Oh wow, he's saying game over. It's so Metal Gear. Remember, 100 Remember, Gravitons is still one of these spares. For some, what a lame enemy. It's a fucking he's flying a fish. And there is. That's pretty much it. Like after. So of the five levels, no, there's five levels and a boss fight that I work through in the game. Jesus. And of those, I, I would say I ran into three different enemies, and that was pretty much it. I'm so not really, wow. Like, it's a bummer, isn't it? Jeez, this game. I was so excited. Yeah, I was too. Yeah. And like, again, who knows? Maybe... Like, I really want to... I still want to play that Wii version, because I don't know if this yeah. is Yeah. No, it's just... So be careful. That worked? 
Yodel. It's it's the next step of Sonic's auto targeting. It's not automatic though, and li it's limited by a meter. Precisely. <laughs> now, have the people in the chat have they played this game or? Uh, that's a great question. Has anybody actually played Rodan? Because you guys are pretty spot on in the descriptions. Yeah. I gotta say, it's I not mean... out yet. It's uh, it's out next week. Or the week I afterwards? I have to look up I the thought it, I thought it was later this week. I thought it was, is it later this week? I thought it was, it was the 6th. The 6th? That's, what, that's, what, that's what Amazon said. Because, uh, you know, I'm getting ready. Hey. hey. <laughs> you, got that, you, got that, you got that pre-order action. God. Yeah, I'm not... All, All right. right. So, so now you're going to learn how to boost. And boosting is how you attack. So you target, and then you hold B. All right, you see? No. Wait a minute. <laughs> I, thought I, I did the same thing before, and it worked. That's a that's a thought you're gonna have a lot in this game. <laughs> okay, the path okay. is clear. Okay. The rainbow okay. marker is my next destination. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, as far as I can tell, oh, what? Now you gotta tar you gotta what? press it again. I you gotta press you gotta keep pressing it. What? Where? Where? Where are you? Uh, did I? No. Uh. <laughs> Wow, the kid! Oh, oh my no, god! There you go, right off it, right off the edge again. Where is? The... Right off the edge again. How do I go? I mean, what? Am... I ran out of. All right, you've got. All right, press Y. Just press Y by itself. <sighs> oh no, it won't let you do that yet. Wow, you actually can't do that. What? Uh, all right. Okay, so. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm standing. Right. You're standing. Jump. What's the jump? Button? Jump is A. But I was doing that earlier. Oh god. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ, this game is. Yeah. Right. All right. <sighs> I'm sorry if this is boring, you guys. Yaddle, I have not played it, but I did play a bunch of bad N64 and PlayStation games. That pretty. That's pretty much what this is, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's not that's, that's like this does fairly accurate description. Yeah, and like there was like I, I there were all these games for like the PlayStation and N64 that were bad and have aged into being even worse. Yes. But in fairness to them, they were experimental. They were they were people figuring yeah, out yeah, yeah, yeah. how to make something work yeah. in three dimensions and have that be as kinetic and interesting as something yeah. like like a Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. And that was really hard. But, like, we figured that out. That's learned at this point, for the most part. Yeah. And this... What? <laughs> uh... There's... I don't know. There's... And it's a... It's a very, um... Or I... Or, or I use... I would rather play Gravity Rush than this. Well, that's a I, that's, that's a better. Yeah, that, that's well, a great I, game. Yeah, that's a good game. Gravity Rush is amazing. Are you saying that's not a good game? I mean, you know, or, or would, are you just saying I'd rather play a better game? Which, hey, guess what? Yeah, we all like we Gravity we Rush. all yeah. would rather play Gravity Rush. Uh, just because someone that means someone's playing a video game. Gravity Rush is so good. Uh, it's just so good. All right. Right, so, the goal is behind me. Okay, there we go. I don't know why it started off that way. See, now I'm, like, kind of terrified. Like, am I going to fuck this up? Oh, yeah. You're going to have that feeling a lot. <laughs> okay. That's a common feeling. All right, so from what I've gathered... All right, i got to admit that the... the, the the, the sun lighting effect is nice. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's I'm a trying to things. think as many positives. Who's shooting at me? What's, what the fuck's going on here? Uh, I couldn't answer that. All right. So I'm going to try to jump. And now target that rainbow. But keep... You want to, every now and again, readjust. And, like... Because you, you would think... Oh, my God! This is like... What the fuck? <laughs> I, I, like, I'm, I'm naturally going upside down. Right. So it's right. like... It's, it's it's tough. It, it it is it is so awkward. It's like this this shit really makes you appreciate Nintendo games. It like, doesn't like it, like doesn't it? When just... you're playing Mario 3D World, I'm like it's oh, once it, like it's what's... I'm learning a new thing every 30 seconds, and it's not like fucking this. So on, on that note with Nintendo, I think Destroy one of the, the things that is the door. like I I think exemplary of why the Wii U never connected with people in a broad way is that instantly 
you understand exactly what's supposed to be happening and what you're supposed to do nature of Nintendo controls is just not consistent across Wii U games. Like, you'll play something like Super Mario Bros. 3D World or Mario Kart 8, and there's just no using this. Yes. It's yeah. all just a traditional game. And then when you play things that do use this, like Wonderful 101, which I think is a very imaginative game, and I know it has its fans, but the interplay between those two things is just not natural in any way, shape, or form. Well, yeah, like, whenever I play a Wii U game, whenever I... If God willing, if I can, I'm going to play with... I'm not going to play with this. Right, you're going to play with the regular controller. Yeah, and this is comfortable. Yeah, I get it. I get it, but whatever. <laughs> I don't need another fucking iPad in my house. And it was like, yeah, it just... But it's like, that being said, it's like, and we're, we're in the same age bracket. Mm -hmm. The Wii U, and granted, we're exceptions to rule, but a lot of people our age were like, listen, these fucking, the PlayStation 4 controller is like a thousand buttons on it. The Wii U, their games are a bit more inviting, a right. bit more right. approachable and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, again, I feel disconnected, which is a dumb thing to say for a guy who's like Mr. Video Game Culturist. But sure, I'm like, sure. I feel disconnected in terms of like, you know, I see a commercial for like the new Call of Duty. I'm like, wow, people still like that, right? And it's yeah. not that's not a criticism. I'm like, wow, people are still no, people are into that. People are still into that. All yeah. right, save this princess. Okay, so I saw like I had to destroy something. So just walk up to it and press B and see how that goes for you, because that's what it told you to okay, do. I just walk almost like all right. Is that? <laughs> it told you to do that. There you go. So you've technically done it. That was it. Now walk. Yeah, wait. Will the cutscene automatically? Yeah, the cutscene will automatically go. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh huh. Um. And there, there she is. There's Princess Cecilia. Princess Cecilia. But yeah, this this exemplifies. I mean, oh yeah, there's so many things to talk about. This exemplifies <laughs> that no one can make a fucking Wii U game other than Nintendo. Uh, well, I, I'm trying to think if I've ever played well, Bayonetta 2, which is great, but that's that's platinum. Yeah. Uh, and... And I feel like Nintendo had a little, little... Well, yeah, they had their fingers in there. Yeah. I will also say that there is one developer out there that is, made, that is not Nintendo, and they have made not one, but two Wii U exclusives. And both of them are excellent. And it's Nap Not Games. Okay. Now, they've made one party game comp called Spin the Bottle. Oh, yeah. Uh, our friend Derek is a, yeah. a big fan of that Derek's game. a huge fan, but they also put out a game earlier this year called Affordable Space Adventures. Oh, I've heard of it. I've never played it. It is, I think, probably one of the best things that came out this year. Okay. Affordable Space Adventures is... It uses everything the Wii U can do. All right. And it is perfectly playable. And it. it's it's a blast. It's one of the order. most unique spins on sort of the slow-paced 2D shooter I've ever seen. Hmm. It's very okay. similar to uh, Solar Jetman oh. and uh, Pixel Junk Shooter. Okay. And so you're you're sort of like everything on the Wii U screen are like the controls for the shitty junker spaceship that you're in. Okay. And you're constantly having to like be like. Increase thrust, increase yeah. mass, redivert power to this, and just like going through this environment trying to trying to survive. And the best is playing it multiplayer, where there's multiple people controlling like the different parts of the ship, mm. and it's it's a blast. It's it's totally cool. But like, that's one weird indie European developer, and these are like the only games under their belts, mm. and like. So yeah, they have their two awesome Wii U games, and I can't think of anybody else that fits in that same category. I would like to ask the people in the chat right now two things. A, what is your favorite Wii U game? And B, was that the worst fucking cutscene that you ever saw <laughs> on a Wii U game? Yes, no, single, single and loving it has already said. This cutscene is riveting. <laughs> Uh, so uh, while well, you're talking about like an indie, a uh, great we, I'm seeing some fucking dude with losing his arm and go, oh Cecilia, and he's all pixelated. Oh uh, great, like that's an original fucking thing. Yeah, oh, that's great. See now uh, see, you're not done. You have to play uh, like an actual level now and apply what you've learned. I don't learn shit. You, you what you've learned, <laughs> eluding the capture of Garuda. I've read this thing oh, three that, times. It doesn't now, make any sense. And I'm still not clear on what the hell anything is. <sighs> Alas. <laughs> Wait, a thousand years passed. Oh, 
I mean, a lobster Johnson says that cutscene did set up the Phantom Pain pretty well. <laughs> Spot on. Spot on. And so yeah, so <laughs> call me Ishmael the Hedgehog. A thousand, mm. a thousand years later passes, and, and I'm gonna look exactly the same. And right? then an Etrian Odyssey mm. character finds you in the oh, desert. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> is that accurate? Mm. Is that like? Are you a fan of those? Do you play Etrian Odyssey? I'm I'm in the, I'm in the periphery. You're on the periphery? Yeah, I'm the right. periphery. I'm not... I a, got an uh, A. You got an A. At the first time, that's a two combo. That got an A. I mean, come on. I mean, I shouldn't complain, right? All right, well... No, I will complain. We'll right. map it up, All right, Matt. See. You got this. Oh, wow. It's going to be amazing. Uh... So what what have you been playing lately, man? What has been what what have you been playing in your spare time? You're still phantom painting it. Uh, I'm still phantom painting it. Um, uh, I have okay. This is weird, right? Because I went on and on about like how I like. Here, I'm not going to make you play this. Oh yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, I you know I want I like I like it when a game uh, really pushes the system. Yeah. Like for me, the last bits of joys I really got was during the PS2 era when you fucking saw Shadow of the Claws. Like, oh my god, you're not supposed to really see that right. coming out of the machine. Maybe there's some later. Like I would say, Phantom Pain for the PS3 is somewhat along. Is that it line. is it along those lines? Yeah, like it's it's commendable what they were able to do. Yeah, like it's kind of a. I've not seen it running on one of the uh, on 360 or PlayStation 3. I will... My understanding is the frame rate's a little rocky. The frame rate's a little rocky. Things are a bit muddy and unclear. Yeah. So I'm like I'm tapping that old like ooh they're really making this fucking oh, hey. and I like the fact that the PS3 and the Xbox 360 the like they're then? what eight sure. nine years old at this point. Oh yeah, yeah they're, they're yeah. old machines. Um. So and it's... we are we are one week shy. Of the 10th anniversary of the release of the Xbox 360. Seriously? Yeah. Holy shit! Yep. That's uh. the, the 13th wow. anniversary. Holy shit. Good job. Uh, uh, that but, just seems impossible to me, but... Um, actually, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah you feel it? Yeah. But, um, so... Which means it's been 10 years since Rumble Roses XX. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they are like my daughters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there great. it is. Yeah, great. There it is. Yeah, great. Um, so there's Phantom Pain. I'm playing some Mario Maker. Um, uh, oh, Mario crap. Maker. Uh, okay, just, just see what just happened. I did what the game wanted me to do, and now I'm trapped. Under you're underneath. Snake. Yeah. What? What? You could run up? Sort of. You're in the Matrix. Uh, no. So. There's that, the Persona, dancing all night long. How is that? It's great! Our, our, our own Susan Arndt here at Games Radar has recommended it to me heartily. I am really bad at rhythm games, though, and I understand that it's really hard. It is pretty tricky. Um, and uh, rhythm, rhythm games have just gotten just more and more complicated. They're so them. hard now. Yeah. Like, I, I, you know, the only one that I can play with any level of confidence at this point is... Uh, the theater rhythm, the Final Fantasy theater rhythm games, mm, okay. which I love, and they're very different for yes. uh, a rhythm game. Well, you know my my still my my veto my vote not veto my vote for the best Vita game in existence. Oh, what is that? Ogre rhythm. Oh, that's right. I that, still have that on that... installed. That's a Yute Saito game, right? Yes, it's a Yute Saito joint. It is. That game is just amazing. It is so weird. It's so strange, yet intuitive, oddly speaking. Well, you see, there, there you go. That's that's a game that I played the first level of, and didn't go back because it kept dying. Hey, what's and on? I couldn't quite figure it out. And that's that's just because I'm bad at rhythm games. I have no rhythm. Yeah, Indeed. I have no rhythm whatsoever. Sorry, and you, like that game, right out the Did gate is very, very demanding. Yes. Yeah. Like it's it's requires a level of multitasking, like in the first 15 seconds, that like holy fucking shit. Yeah. But for what it's funny, right? Like how that game has zero hand holding, and this game has so much of it. Yet it's like oh, it's it's and it's the opposite. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, I, I honestly, man, I. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so it's the year 2015, and I just bought some more virtual console games for the original Wii, not the Wii. Oh. Um, how much longer is that store gonna stay? You know, it's you know what, it's 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 Nintendo, right? For everything they do right, they do 17 things wrong, or like, I thought, ooh, I'm gonna upgrade all my virtual console games. 
from the Wii to the Wii U, like, first off, I can't do all of them. And even can't, come close. Can't do all of them, because... Never mind the fact that Genesis and all those other systems are not supported. Like, like my Nintendo, originally from Ultra, you know, that was delisted and yep. not available. All right, really quickly. Oh, let's... let's kinda, kinda <laughs> Ram look cool. Now I have to fight these guys. That's like, you know, it's like going on a bad internet date. I'm like, oh, it's like the same movie. I'm still not into her, but you know, it's like, oh, oh, oh. Now wait, see now spikes will pop out of it, and I will not know that those spikes are going to pop out. The spikes are you talking about? Those oh, spikes. those spikes. Those spikes. And uh, nope, nope. And that that just almost cost me all of my health. So if I get hit one more time, I, I'm dead. So did you like Knights? I love Knights. Okay. Why yeah. do you think Knights worked? I think Knights works because of the perspective. It shows you from the side before it does okay. anything else. All right. And it's very simple. Like, it shows you how the character moves before you're allowed to move it. Yes. Like, you're in motion before you start the game. And that's it. Like, it's like, maintain this motion. And that's all you have to do. It's one input. And saying, all right, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And then eventually, when you want to, like, find out about boosting, you experimentally press one button. All right. And that's, it's, it's simplicity itself. Whereas this is, I mean, you couldn't get through the tutorial. It's just, I think Yuji Naka games, when you got to push more than one button... That's a problem. Yeah. And it's like, okay, Sonic, Knights, Choo Choo Rocket. Right. It's like, it's fast, but I've got... One button. One button, dude. One button. One button. One button. And here it's like, you're telling me to hit the, hit the X button, hit the Y button. I'm like, first off, why can't I just use a shoulder button? That's easier, because right. my finger's already fucking resting on it. Whoa! They just get clonked. And how would I have known? No. How would I know that anything was going to clonk me? So uh, and... <laughs> Single and loving it has asked, is there any possibility that this game is going to become an eSport? Yes. Oh my god. Like, I, when are we going to get to, like, the American Gladiators of eSports? Why doesn't that exist yet? Um, so what, what are your opinions of eSports? Um, I mean, like, I find the term, uh, like, I don't think that term is going to be with us for very long. I think the word eSport is going to go away. And I think it's going to go away in the same way that people have pretty much stopped saying casual gamer. Like, that's a thing that's finally lost its currency. And, and thank God, because it was created by marketing. Like, that's not a useful thing to say. And I, I think that... Uh, oh, oh, I think... All right. So every now and again, you will see that somebody has honed in on you with like a targeting with missiles. So someone's something. attacking you. Right, when it's all of a sudden red. And, but like, if you're in midair, there's no way to dodge that. Did you ever play that recent, it came up for the 360 uh, PS3 um, Ace Combat game? Oh, uh, event something. I, yeah. Yeah. It's just a few years ago. Yeah. Did you it's like great. It? Oh, it's awesome. Great. Yeah. Great game. Because that game was like, oh, someone's got you. Like, shake them off. Here it's like, there's no sense of... Yeah. Well, I'm not playing it, so I'm not, obviously I'm not getting the same sense of danger or... Oh, you're getting it. <laughs> you know what? It's funny because one of the best parts about Knights is the abundance of, like, fucking numbers on the screen. Uh, yeah, and, and doodads. But it's pleasurable. You it's, know what yeah, they all mean. Yeah. Like... Like... <laughs> This is like, uh, get, get some Gravitons. What? Like, I don't know. Get the what? I don't care. Knight said, go get stars and blue things. Yes. Get the orb. The blue things mm. will let you go further. The stars will give you points. Yeah. Simple as that. End of story. Simple as that. <laughs> so to, to finish what I was saying about esports, I you know, like I, I think competitive gaming, very popular... Uh, like, spectator gaming was inevitable. Like, we, we've seen it coming for years and years and years. What? I'm dead. Why am I dead? Can uh, you tell me why I'm dead? 
Uh, yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. It's a good question, isn't yeah. it? It's a very pertinent question. What do you think... Well, okay, well... I'll, I'll get into what I was going to ask in a sec, but... Um, first, when it comes to eSports or that type of stuff, I will say, and this may be a controversial opinion, mm -hmm. the one thing that's kind of like... It's... it's, it's we're at a time in video games where people are asking the hard questions which are necessary in terms oh, of... Oh, I forgot to mention. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, there's a gun. There's a gun? You can shoot things? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. <sighs> uh, why can you shoot things? Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, it, this is all Shadow the Hedgehog bullshit now. <laughs> Skim the gun! Oh, my God. Right? All right, you were, so you were saying eSports. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, you know, it's like... The, the, the good thing about video games is, like, people are asking the hard questions and they're asking how other people view them. That being said, there's two groups that video game people seem to be fixated on their opinions, and I'm like, who gives a shit? The first one's Hollywood. Right. And, like, you know, nothing fucking annoyed me more than the goddamn backlash against that fucking Pixels game. Oh, really? Where people are like, oh, this looks so stupid, and what's your point? Right. Yeah. I, like, I mean... Hollywood doesn't get video games. Hollywood doesn't get a lot of things right, buddy. Right. And, like, the, con the, con shit. the conversation shouldn't be, oh, this is, like, a mistreatment of video games. It should be, this is a bad movie. This is a bad movie, yeah. Right. Yeah, Adam Sandler's made a whole bunch of shitload of movies that are horrible. They're terrible. Yeah, terrible. So it's Hollywood, but the next one now is what ESPN thinks. Right. Yeah. And, and, and this is the, like so. I do you see, like? Do you really need fucking League of Legends to be on fucking Sports Center? Is it that important to you? And, like and like, like, like I get it. You want your parents to understand it. My my other thing is this: is I I don't I, and like this is not a knock against esports in any way, shape, or form. That's not what I am saying. Mm -hmm. But what I am saying is that you do need to think about. Venue and audience. Do the people on, like, do the producers on Sports Center devote okay, an equal great. amount of time to NASCAR as they do the NBA? The answer is no. The answer is of course not, because the people that watch Sports Center don't care as much about that as they do. You know, they yeah, don't care as much about NASCAR as they do about the NBA. Yeah, that's pure numbers right there. It's pure numbers. Yeah. So at the end of the day, like, guess what? I get that there are, you know, 26 million people watching a Hearthstone, or, like, championship match, yeah. or, or a League of Legends uh, tournament finals, or a Heroes of the Storm college championship. I get that you have those numbers, but you need to think about venue. They're already watching it on Twitch. They're already watching it on YouTube. They're already watching it on ESL's website. Why in God's name does it need to be where the audience isn't? Yeah. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. yeah, basically. End of story. Yeah. Like, I, I, yeah, I, man, that stuff, I find it infuriating. It just drives me up the fucking wall. I, also, I don't know why. It's also like, like well, it's also the other part of that conversation is like the desperate need to like chase the money like it's oh well oh well this is an untapped enormous market whereas uh. instead like it's so foolhardy because the people sitting there are saying oh, oh man we need that market we need that esports market you're forgetting that the market is already served why would they come to you when they already get the specialized thing that they already desire from someplace else it's like uh you know, let's look at comics. You know, you were, we were talking about cartoonists earlier. But it's like, why would somebody go to Ultra Comics in in the mid-90s when Marvel and DC already exist? And they're already going to give you the exact same thing and of superior quality. But then somebody like Image comes along and says, hey, we're just going to go ahead and create an entirely new market. Fantagraphic says, hey, we're going to create an entirely new spin on this thing. Yeah. We're going to offer you something different. So, like, again, like, the people sitting there being like, oh, well, we need to have esports being served in the exact same way as major mainstream sporting events. That's just dumb. 
Well, I mean, you know, when you get down to it now, that's the, that, that's kind of the and the, this is we've always had this problem of like just marketing people with their pie, the pie charts and charts and graphs, and it's all by committee, right. which this game kind of exudes that. It's like yeah, like this. this there, there's a little bit of everything here. This right? thinking, this thinking that we need to have all the things that are popular. Yeah, and like that's that's such a shame to see this come out of Propay after a string of things like Let's Tap and Ivy the Kiwi, which are very much like, let's make the thing that we want to make and that we think is good. Let's make the game that we want to play and then see how that plays. Whereas this is like an amalgamation of everything that somebody wanted out of a Wii game that they said they wanted in like... I mean, I mean, but then again, it's high, It's not It's not surprising, is it? Because it's like, you know, again, they made a lot of games which didn't really connect, so now, whether it be investors or just pure, pure frustration, let's try to do what's pop, what the kids like, and there's a there's an inherent lack of confidence in this game, yes. which drives me up. Because if there's one thing I can't stand, it's fucking lack of confidence. Like you know what? Especially from some like Prope. Like you know they got people who's helped build the fucking the video game world that we're, we're living in right oh, yeah. now. Oh yeah. It's like Jesus Christ. And it's just. I mean this art's nice and you know it's, fine. it's it's. I mean the game the game is ugly, but that's I mean it was built. Uh. If we get down to it. The assets for this game were built for hardware that is literally 16 years old. Uh, like, this was built for GameCube architecture. Yeah, yeah. Like, of course it looks bad. But even then, there are GameCube games that are still beautiful. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I am so happy to see you confronted with this game for the first time and have have it recorded live for posterity. Like, you saw me get through that level and, like, think about how long I had to play to it to get to moving the character with that level of ease. Again, there's no, like, there's no, for me, there's no anticipation. I can't, I can't follow along. It's, no. it's, it's like a Michael Bay scene where, like, there's no point A, there's no point B, I don't know what's going on. Right. It's just... And it's not it's not confusing in a fun way. No, no. You're, you're a big fan of the movie Speed Racer. Oh the, my the Wachowski brothers. Holy shit. And that movie could be overwhelming with the amount of information it's throwing at you at any given time. But even when it's confusing, it's thrilling. There's like, a there's an underlying logic. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know what everybody's trying to do. Yeah. Even if you don't know what's happening in an individual moment. Oh, it's so good. Oh so good. Again, in the this is one of my I like to brag in Once Upon a Time in Warner Brother Developmental where they, mm, mm. They, they are, there's two positive reviews of that movie on their fucking cork board. Oh. Mine and Roger Ebert's. Nice. Because everyone else... Hey, there you go. Yeah, there you go. I, I didn't know Ebert praised that movie. Oh, that yeah. Really happy. That makes me really happy. And I remember like my buddy... I, I, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be sharing this, but who gives a shit? <laughs> so I remember like, you know... Because I fucking hated The Matrix. I hate The Matrix. Like, the movie sucks. Yeah, it's, it's not Because this is me being a film fucking snob. Because uh, in addition to video games, I'm also a movie guy. Yeah. But it was like, you know, it just I just couldn't stand the fucking Matrix. I remember seeing in the theater, I'm like, of course his name's Neo. Of course there's a rave scene. Of course it fucking rips off Hong Kong cinema. Which is, you know, ultimately neither here nor there. I was just mostly pissed off that Dark City, a vastly superior film, was, was like so much better. A year before it Yeah, came. and a just no one gave a it. shit. But, so, my buddy who works at Warner Brothers like, listen, man, so I got some bad news. I got some news for you. The Wachowskis are working on a Speed Racer movie. He's like, all right, before you fucking get angry, know this. They held up production for like four fucking months because the fucking studio says, we're going to CGI the monkey. They're like, no, 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 the Wachowski's like, no, we're getting a real fucking monkey here. And they're like, all right, fine. And like... Yeah, that's good. that's props. Props, yeah. props are due. Yeah. I didn't realize that that was like the fight that... That was, yeah. They... Apparently they just like just grown to a halt. Like... Holy shit, this movie's not getting done because they want a fucking monkey? Fine, they, they get the monkey. So, anyway, so, oh, I was going to say earlier, like, what do you think is the one thing that could have fixed this game? Uh, Because the camera just seems really ridiculous. I don't think even that would have fixed it, though. Because the, the camera, this is one of those few examples where you can't just sit there. It's not like Sonic, where you can sit there and be like, oh, like Sonic 2006. Yeah. Like, the camera is clearly the big problem. It is... Like, the controls do not work. And, like, like the fact that I can't 
reliably press these buttons and know what's going to happen every single time automatically breaks the game. Because, you know, like you were saying earlier, I think the, the thing that really seals the deal with Knights is, like, it's got that people at the time like, what? Like, right. they were expecting, like, a close-up Mario 64, not, like, a side-scrolling, far away, like, what? A, a totally weird, different thing. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Like, it's, I, a, I, it's a racing game, really. I would like to put out, uh, a Lobster Johnson has said, I just downloaded and installed Knights on Steam because of this conversation. Good, and that, good, that, yeah. If, if, if we've accomplished anything today, my friend, that is, is beautiful. I just want fucking Res to come out on Steam. How has that not happened yet? I don't understand. I don't... I, I, I don't, really don't understand. I don't get that at all. Like, it seems to me like that would be a lock for... I mean, they made a 360 version, so old, I would assume that yeah, the, 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 the PC blah 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 is there. What, a, what, the, what is the deal with Mizuguchi these days? Do we know where the hell he is? He's... I don't know, man. You know, I got my theories. Oh, you got your theories? I got my theories. All right, what's the what's the running theory on where where ye old Tetsuya is at the moment? I I just I don't know. I just think he's a guy who made the perfect game, and he was in the perfect environment, and now mm. he can't do that perfect game anymore, and it's kind of probably a bummer, you know. Because for a while, people forget like. It ain't just Knights. It ain't just Space Channel 5. It was fucking Sega Rally. Sega, Sega, Rally. Sega Touring Car. So good. Yeah, and that was like a weird corporate culture. Before video games became like kind of... Like, video games were still under the radar in the 90s to a certain extent. To an extent. To and, an extent. And there was there was money to be made in experimentation. Yeah. And like, I think it's... We, we live in... You know, when, when time... When all is said and done, I think we will still be in what is considered the gold. Oh, like, unquestionably. Unquestionably. Oh my god. Like right now, like the fact that we've only just in the past few years gotten to a place where game development is as democratic as yeah. it is. Like, we are still in the golden age of video games. Yeah. But there was you know, today, if you need like for real experimentation in design, it's very rare to see that done in the big budget market. Whereas when Mizuguchi was at his height, there was big cash to be had in yeah. experimentation. Like, people wanted the weird ideas yeah. because Mario was the weird idea. Like, Zelda was the weird idea. And people wanted that cash. I mean, that's why, like, it's, our hang, me hanging out with you and, and our various colleagues have made me appreciate the PlayStation 1. Oh, yeah. Like, oh my god, I had like... I had no idea there were so many crazy fucking games. Like that game that Sony made. Yeah, Sony themselves. Sony was just like, what do you need? What up? Yeah. Oh, what, do you, what do you want? Two million dollars? Make whatever. Yeah, we'll get that guy who's a musician and the guy who does children's book illustrations. Right. They'll make a fucking game about a, a 2D ra rapping, rapping dog. dog. Whatever. Rapping who cares? dog. Sure. You know. But yeah, yeah, man. I, like it was, it was a, a different moment. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. It's gonna be really bad. Yep, there I go. Good flailing. There I go. There I go into the Nether region. I think that's that's as good a time as any to to call it. Uh, we're wrapping it yeah, up. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it up. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Rodea the Sky Soldier. If you too like gaming self-flagellation you'll be able to play it at the end of the week according to amazon i think so i you know I, this mm. month it'll be out it's in november at the very least november the very least and uh we probably won't be streaming it but we're going to be very interested to check out the regular wii version to see if there's uh, any difference I, I, regardless of the quality of the wii version I'm happy that Yuji Naka is out there making a game. And it's I'm glad incredible. this came out. Yes, so am I. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad it exists. I'm glad that that guy is getting the, his name out there with an action game that people might notice. Yes. And I, I, I look forward to whatever's next for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this has been Matt Hawkins, and you can find Matt at attract attractmo.de. It's at like because you know it's, right, a, it's a Danish right. URL. Uh, just it's just Google attract, attract mode. mode. We're the first or the second hit because the track modes are, you know, right. the, 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 the video games. Uh, I'm also on Twitter on Fort90. Fort90, spell it out. Yeah, F spell it out. That's, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it like this so you guys see it, at Fort90. 
F O R T N I N A T Y. And uh, um, you'll be able to find him there, and, and you can play Fate Tectonics. Yeah, just go to fatetectonics.com or just look for it on Steam. There's actually um, kind of a a good update coming out very soon. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, awesome. Um, yeah. So you guys, you guys can check that out. You guys can follow us here on Games Radar. Click that little heart below your screen. It's not like the Twitter heart. It's a different thing. Can I, can I plug one more thing? Do it! I didn't even talk about this. So, maybe you guys are too young for this, but uh, there was a thing in the 80s, in addition to the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo that's 90s Genesis, which technically was late 80s, called Garbage Pail Kids. Remember Garbage Pail Kids? Oh, that's right, yes. Yeah. So I'm working on a documentary that's celebrating this year's the 30th anniversary, the 30th birthday of Garbage Pail Kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize what a strong cultural phenomenon. People are obsessed. Yeah, it was like the, 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 the most recent last real example of art really talking to children right. in a subversive manner. Yeah. So uh, it's called 30 Years of Garbage. It's coming out next year. Um, so but just go to 30years.com and also, and again, fatetectonics.com. Also, go to uh, bentomiso.com, which are my fine friends up in Toronto. There you go. Uh, you know, I'm actually moving to Canada, so you know. As, as a long, long, hard attempt. It's been a long time. Long, hard attempt to move to Canada, but uh, even when you're there, man, you'll you're always welcome. Yes, you're always welcome. Yes. Uh, Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Of course. Been okay. wanting, I've been wanting to glom my way onto your show, and you brought me on when you're playing <laughs> Rodeo Sky. Something. You're Rodea yeah. the thing. Rodea hey, the thing. Uh, you know what? No complaints here, okay? No fucking complaints. <laughs> so next week, everybody on the show, we're going to have a very special guest on I Got Next. We're going to have Jason Voorhees himself, Kane. Un Kane fucking hotter. Kane Un fucking believable. Kane hotter is oh. going to be here on can the I, show. Can I come? Can I just sit and stay out? Like, seriously? Like... Well, he's going to be joining us via Skype. He's not oh, going to be in the okay. room. Oh, okay. All right. He's not going to be in the room. He's going to be following along with us and helping us to play the Friday the 13th game for the NES as he talks about the new Friday the 13th game that they're working on, uh, which is going to be a really interesting thing. I can't wait for that guy to hang out. I'm very excited. Kane freaking hotter. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, that's like great, he right? Is. Oh my god. And then uh. this Thursday, if you want more ridiculous, awesome interviews, but you want to hear from somebody who's uh, in game development uh, in the production side of things, we're going to have on Rihanna Pratchett, the writer of Tomb Raider 2013 yeah. and Rise oh, yeah. of the Tomb Raider. Yeah. That's awesome. And we're going to be playing a whole lot of Rise of the Tomb Raider, so you get an early look at the game, and we're going to have her on. So follow us if you have not yet, and uh, yeah, we will see you next time, everybody. And we get to enjoy our banter for like another 60 seconds. Alright, that's cool. How do you feel about Rodea's uh, sky cylinder? Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm still going to, I'm still going to purchase it just so I can have the Wii version. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we want to play the Wii version. I want to play the Wii version. That's going to be freaking awesome. Yeah, so. But it's not fun. <sighs> it's really bad. Well, yeah. I mean, when you, the first tweet you sent out, I'm like, oh, the game's not good. Like, that was the first judgment call I've heard from anyone. Yeah. Because no one really gives a shit about this game. Oh, nobody, that's, that's no, kind of no a problem. problem.